Well, the story of Mr. Maybe uh, begins clear back in 2008. Um, I was running some trail cameras and and got pictures of a buck. Just had incredible genetics. And um, fast forwarding a little bit, I finally catch up with him uh, in 2010. And um, he was more than I ever could have imagined. On this particular hunt, uh, back in 2010, we were still very green. We were learning every day we were going out. We were picking up new pieces of information about uh, Mr. Maybe. We slipped in on this oxbow. We finally got the right wind, and we went in and just basically set up on the ground almost like you were gun hunting, just kind of brushed ourselves in a little bit. Um, I knew he was betting by this one particular huge maple tree on this oxbow. I, I watched him do it day after day out of my observation stands. And uh, so we, we tried to slip in there to where we could see that, but not push in too far and got set up there on the ground. And it was only a matter of 15 or 20 minutes. And he stood up out of his bed. And for the first time, I'm able to put my eyes on him and I'm a lot closer than I've ever been. And I'm really starting to think it could happen. I looked back across the field and I noticed a smaller buck coming in um, and starting to mess around with his does a little bit. And he immediately acted aggressive. He he pinned his ears down, he canned his head, and he and he basically ran the buck off. He charged him and was just trying to get control of his harem of does again. Um, at that point, I thought maybe I had a little niche. I thought, you know, he's aggressive. I'm going to try to call him, emulate another buck that's, you know, going to come in and try to take his does from him. But this scenario just didn't work the way the, the, the setup was. He could he could see that there wasn't another buck there and uh, if I had a decoy it might have worked a lot differently but I tried to call to him um, I got his attention several times but he just he wouldn't give me the time of day I mean he would look in my direction but was not worried of uh, uh, of another buck in the area um, you know a buck of this size and and, and age class um, has proved himself his entire life he's already established that He's the big dog, you know, he's already established his position um, as the dominant buck in the area because he's had encounters with bucks his entire life and has, you know, been in fights and has won those fights and is starting to get a little bit of a um, street credit, I guess, for lack of a better term, that these bucks already know who he is and are already scared of him. So he knows right away that he's not in any danger of, of another buck coming in and changing his area or, or taking over his area. These does are coming to Mr. Maybe because of his genetic appeal. They're, they're seeing something in him that is attractive to them and they want their fawns to be successful based on evolutionary reasons. And they're finding his areas and finding where he is based on his, his scent being in, in scrape lines and rub lines. They're finding his territory and then they're also following his, his vocalizations, his verbal commands in a way and it makes him in total control of his of his own little herd. You know, capturing footage of a nearly 230 inch buck like this, a world-class animal, is so rare. To be able to see him in his natural habitat, interacting with other deer is a very, very good learning lesson, not only for Colton, but for everybody, us here at the Deer Society included. Now, Colton hooks up with Andy Orr, one of our pro staff here at the Deer Society, and something changed. They decided to come up with a game plan, and the biggest part of that game plan was understanding the communication and trying to figure out how they could interact more effectively with an animal like this. It's hard to imagine chasing a world-class buck like this for four years, and that's all that's on your mind. Think of the commitment that Colton has made going after this deer. Four years, four seasons, he's letting every single buck go right by his tree stand. He puts the name of this buck on an arrow that he chooses to take the animal with. And when it all comes together, the emotional floodgates just come pouring out. We're about to hear the advanced strategies and communication tactics that Colton used to close the deal on this legendary buck, Mr. Maybe. I hook up with uh, my good buddy Andy Orr of Advanced Whitetail Systems and, and we start to strategize about where we're going to get back on this buck because of the drought. Um, every puddle, every creek stream was starting to dry up. It was extremely, extremely dry and we happened to stumble into this secluded timber pond 
It was the only source of water for a long, long ways, and we knew he had to come drink somewhere at some time. I hung a very specialized trail camera in the pond. I, I actually waded into the pond. I drove a steel post in the pond and, and put the camera on the post, facing some scrapes that were along the edge. Well, after the first week of running trail cams, I was starting to realize that, that Mr. Maybe had gone almost exclusively nocturnal, um, and I knew that we had to do something to try to get him in daylight hours. Now, that's when I, me and Andy got together and we started talking about doing this intruder scenario. We're going to slip in there on these scrapes with some premium uh, a buck scent and just using small amounts of it so we don't blow him out of there. We're going to freshen these scrapes for him and try to get him to be a little bit more active on these scrapes in daylight hours. It's basically if you were to come home and walk into your house and all of a sudden you smell another man's cologne and you, you, you don't think about it too much but you just know it's there and then another day you come home and you smell that cologne and in the back of your mind you're remembering it but then you hear a guy talking in the back room instantly you're mad you're charged up you want to know what's going on well it's the same principle with what we're doing with this buck we're trying to turn him inside out we're trying to get him worked up so that we have an opportunity to be the guy talking in the back room and 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 call to him to where we can get him charged up and hopefully bring him in and uh, and offer us a shot it was a hot day. I almost thought about not even going, but I thought with the warm temperatures up in the 70s that maybe I'd catch him coming in there to get a drink. Um, the whole afternoon was, was very typical of what you would expect on a 70 degree day. Not a lot of movement, some does and, and, and small bucks and things like that. And about a half an hour before dark, I decided that I'd carried my calls with me. I might as well try them. October 20th, a little bit of a pre-rut going on already, you know, they're starting to figure things out, see what's going on. I figured I might as well try it. I reached over and I grabbed my black racks, I did a short rattling sequence, and instantly I heard what sounded like a buck rubbing on a tree up the hill. So I kind of paused and listened, and sure enough, I heard it again. So I started rattling again, just real kind of lightly. It wasn't too far away. 150, 200 yards, I could hear the sound. And uh, I heard I heard it again instantly. Like it was, hey, I'm up here and I'm warning you, you better stop. And I uh, got my bow and I'm kind of sitting there ready to go on my platform and nothing's happening. So I decide I have to try to make something happen. I pulled my, pulled my extinguisher up out of my coat and I just did one long, deep grunt. <laughs> And uh, sure enough, here he comes. You can hear a buck coming down the hill. At this point in time, I still have no idea what buck it is. I can just tell that he's coming. And he, uh, he shows himself finally through one small opening. And instantly I recognized who it was. And, and four years of my life were, were coming down to this one moment right here, right now. And when he steps out on that pond dam, he just lets this huge growl of a grunt go and he's just like where are you you're in my area and I'm I'm ready to fight and when he opened up far enough I released that arrow and it was a it was basically a perfect shot at 22 yards he bailed up out of the pond and water was splashing and he just got up on the bank and he stopped and he looked around and he started to walk off out of my dream. Next thing you know, here it is, it's dark, and I have no idea, I have no answers to what just happened. Last night he came in, it was about a 22 yard shot. We're just gonna go in nice and easy. Uh, we're all camoed up, sprayed down again, just like we're going hunting, so we're just gonna move real slow, keep the wind at our advantage, and hopefully get on the blood and walk 100 yards from the stand, and he's gonna be laying there. His head's on the ground, dude. It's over. Oh my lord. Four years I've been waiting to put my hands on this rack. Oh, oh my god. Are you kidding me? This arrow was for him and every time I knocked it, it was, it was specifically because I was hunting him and October 20th, I just, I can't believe I finally got him. 
I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've hunted this deer for four years. I've been my life for the last four years, and now I finally got him. So there's a lot of different aspects of this hunt that that made it successful. One of the biggest ones is persistence. You know, just staying on them and and staying driven, staying hungry, just enjoying the pursuit. You know. A big thing is just never ever stop learning. You have to learn. If you're a hunter, you have to continue to learn and, and be willing to accept the fact that you don't know everything and there's always something that you're going to pick up on that's going to help you along the way. And working, working with, with sense as well as calling in a system, you know, painting the picture of this intruder scenario and then following it up with the calling, I mean that sealed the deal. If you can understand what a buck like this is thinking and use that against him with communication, you're definitely stacking the deck in your favor. Want to experience the same results you just witnessed? Use what the Deer Society experts use. The Extinguisher Deer Call and Black Rack Rattling System are the highest rated deer communication systems of all time. And less than 1% of deer hunters will have the opportunity to buy one this season. Get yours today at thedeersociety.com. Order now.